Hello folks, we're back again and we're going to ramble a little bit today. Rambling men. Yeah, every now and then we like to just kind of pick a board game topic and rap about it mm -hmm. a little bit. To use a, a turn of phrase. Rap. <laughs> it's yeah. not an actual rap. I'm definitely not going to actually rap. The, the, the idea for today's video are games we love mm -hmm. but are terrible to table. Very terrible to table, yeah. And if you don't know what I mean by that, that's simply pulling it out and setting it mm -hmm. down, uh, running through those setup, the setup that you always have to read no matter how well you'll know yeah. the game. <laughs> yeah, right. And and the th kind of thing that like you know prevents you from getting out. It's like, man, I really want to play that game, but God, that's gonna be the whole session is just me setting this game up, and then I'll play it tomorrow, and that kind of thing, where it really keeps you from getting these great games out on the table because it's just so heavy to put out. Yeah, and another thing that comes up too, like with my first example, which I just remembered at mm -hmm. this moment. Yeah. Because I did. I want one specific example. <laughs> There's both, a lot of examples. It's kind of hard to do. Yeah, it's like, oh my gosh. Uh, when I said, let's talk about it, you're like, I don't even need to do any research. Yeah. I, I could rattle off like six games that are terrible <laughs> to table right yeah. now. And I love all of them. But... Yeah. I, uh, we're going to do one specific example and then we're going to start talking about like maybe genres and chunks of games. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, setting up, if you've got to set it up the day before you play, mm -hmm. because you don't, it's already going to go eight hours yeah. <laughs> and you don't want to go longer than that. So my first specific example is Frostpunk. That's a hefty one. That yeah. is that is def that is yeah. probably my hardest game. Do you guys want to come over and set up Frostpunk with me? Yeah. <laughs> We're not playing it. We're just setting it up. We're yeah. setting it up. Yeah. I'll I'll solo yeah. it for a few days, and then you guys can come over, and we'll you know we'll reset it. Yeah. Do you think that's the heaviest game you have? I think it might yeah. be. It's pretty. It's it's just in general heavy. Yeah. yeah. It's a co-op game, and uh, it's co-op because you need to break up the heaviness and split that amongst other people. I think if you played it alone at a really set steady pace and you enjoyed that, mm -hmm. but it's a, like a little too much stress and, and, and stuff to like sit and play online. And I, <sighs> and, and it's way too much setup for me to do, for me not to like be having a party. It's yeah. like, it's like having a party really. <laughs> it is. And I mean, there are like, so you're, there's four advisor roles. So you could have a four player. I mean, you could have as many people co-op in it as you wanted to. You could have sure. two on each advisor role. But each one of those advisor roles has like a whole section to have to keep up with. So if you're playing that by yourself, you're probably going to be standing up most of the time and circling back and forth around the table to keep an eye on everything that's going on. It's really meant, I think it's really, that game's really meant to be a co-op game. And yeah. It works well because of it. It's like driving one of those uh, one of those Titans in Pacific Rim. You know, you need two, yeah, right. <laughs> you need yeah, two you people's need brains just to operate it. <laughs> That's a yeah, that's a good analogy. Yeah, yeah. So very what, very cool game though. Very neat. It yeah. is fun. It's fun. I, in fact, I think about it all the time. Oh. I want to play it. I've gone out and bought all the extra stuff. That is uh, on the TI level of um, of games though. As far as like when you go to play it, it's like all right, we're gonna have an event and it's gonna be uh, snow apocalypse all day and yeah. half the night. Pack a lunch. Yeah. <laughs> probably at least a good seven hour game or something by the time you really get running through it and remember the rules um, yeah. so you've but, got do you have a specific example yeah so my biggest game i think to get out um on the the table is uh sword and sorcery mm. uh made by aries games um one of my favorite games if not only because of like some i have somewhat of a nostalgic factor with it because it was one of the first um really kind of heavy games that i got into and uh, it's just a it's a it's just a pure dungeon crawl. It's really well uh, done in a lot of ways, except there are like some rules that you have to like you almost have to get develop a relationship with that game and with the <laughs> forums on the uh, board game geek in order. To, but once you do, you're like, all right, this is kind of like we got a thing going on and we're tight. Uh, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> yeah, you have to get comfortable with compromise so... on some of the. On some of the rules and stuff. Yeah, well, I try. I mean, the game plays best if you strictly uh, roy, uh, uh, rule lawyer it out and make sure that you're doing it properly. Because uh, some of the things that are easy to mess up are like in your benefit. So you, you want to make sure you're 
to pay attention. But there's so many pieces of that game. You have like all these chits and everything that you're having to deal with on the table. Everybody's got all these extra cards. They got the cards for their armor and their their um, their all their special abilities and what those those things do. And then just the the, the all, miniatures for all the um, enemies and like AI cards for all the enemies. And there's just, like anytime you're setting up a whole scenario, it's like always had to try to do that a day ahead of time. I would set this because if I'm having people come over, it's like an hour literally just to set up one scenario of the game, not even just getting uh. all the pieces out, but just just to make that specific scenario. So not um, only is it like a basic setup, but you've got like a like an asymmetrical kind of setup for each scenario that yeah, you're yeah, to? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the enemies that come out and the, the AI cards and um, and just all of the other little components and, and things that might show up in the game. There's a million chits in that game, so it's, it's, a, it's a handful. But excellent game. Uh, I would uh, suggest anybody looking at it to just get the core box and play with that for a while and see if that's enough. I've got like all of it, and it's like it's a, it's a lot. <laughs> because we had so many examples, we thought we'd kind of like like narrow like put them into some groups, mm -hmm. so we're not like just railing on a one game or to one a couple of games like a little bit too much. But uh, one big example of games is uh, any of the Simon. Uh, oh, yeah. Eric Lang uh, series of games that's that's uh, Blood Rage, Rising Sun, and Ankh, especially uh, those those games. Uh, and I feel it the most with Ankh. Well, okay, oh, so yeah. I, I don't play Rising Sun all that much. I liked it. I thought thought it was a lot pretty good. Mm -hmm. I got an insert to kind of fit, kind of combine the boxes down to just like maybe two or three boxes. Ankh, for some reason, is like no matter. What insert you buy is going to be three boxes of stuff, yeah, yeah. and it is. And if you've got all of it, I mean, it might even be more than that. I mean, it is. It is really difficult. And then when you go to play it, you're just digging through like a million characters. There's mm -hmm. all these different options and stuff. So if you've got some wishy washy friends that don't know what they want to be, it's not as simple as going, "I'm the blue one," <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, those, man, uh, it, it does suck when you have to pull out multiple boxes to set up, like, just the core set of a game, um, and that goes on, you deal with it uh, for a while until you, you quit buying those games, because <laughs> you have <laughs> five of them already on your shelf that have three or, three or more boxes that hold all the minis in it, uh, and like you said, Simon, so especially with their, I don't know about every one of their games, I've got um, I've got some Zombicide and I've got uh, Arcadia Quest now, and I didn't even get all the content for Arcadia Quest, and I have way too much of that stuff in a pile that I'm kind of debating on, like just you know just selling off those expansions and just keeping the core uh, set of that stuff because it's it's really enough that core set. But they're 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 really big. About, I've used this term before that they just vomit content at you on these Kickstarters. Uh. And it's just, blah, here's more, blah, blah, there's so much content. And it's so hard. <laughs> it's unnecessary. It's so hard to not get it all. Yeah. I feel really compelled with a lot of these things to just get all of it for some reason. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not even sure why. But I think I'm going to start, uh, just like I did with DEI, we'll just start buying a big tote. That it yeah. all fits in and reboxing it, making my own custom big box yeah, out of it. Warehouse. It's yeah. going to the point, yeah. I mean, I've got an attic, so I can stick the boxes in there for a yeah. while. I've all, Holly's already kind of making some noise about like fire hazard and stuff. <laughs> fire hazard. <laughs> Storing cardboard. I would all want reams of cardboard all over the place. I, I don't know. I, it was a small fire, but <laughs> something just took hold hard in the attic. Yeah, yeah it hit this one part of the attic and just. <laughs> All that plastic coated uh, cardboard. Uh, yeah, <laughs> waxed cardboard. Yeah. Well, so, so yeah, I, I this, those Simon games gotta they gotta be tamed down. Yeah, they they really need to calm down with their cool minis or not. You know, it's like maybe there's maybe not. I don't know. It's too much. Well, I was just looking at C Cthulhu Death May Die, so yeah. that's that one too. That one's like. 
there, you, the, you can't fit all the maps in one of the boxes. Mm -hmm. So you're going to automatically have them in a couple. So to make sure you got everything, you're talking about a stack of boxes like this yeah, tall. Yeah, it's, that's either, like, it's either that or a box this tall. And yeah. So it's like, you pick, you pick your poison, I guess. I don't know. And I'm about to get another, th like, three, at least three boxes. In yeah, from, for, a zomp, for, a... for the new For the new version of Cthulhu Death Bay. Oh, oh, so oh. I got all of the last one. I'm about to get all of the new one. And you've got Marvel Zombies coming, too. Marvel Zombies also coming yeah yeah simon stop making so many minis stop many being minis. cool <laughs> <laughs> it's not cool how many minis i have um but yeah uh so i guess going past that uh we could uh well we could just mention in general like i already mentioned sword and sorcery but we could just mention in general these these sprawling campaign games oh. that we get um which i guess I, I guess could, I don't know. Death may die. Is that could you consider that? Is that that's, that's oh, it's not a campaign. Yeah, it's just got a lot. It's just got so many options. A lot of yeah, more like the Simon overly optionated things. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so like it, it was such an easy example. I didn't want to bring it up, but like everybody um, feels this about Gloomhaven. You know, Gloomhaven's an example of a game that's just you know a lot of stuff to pull out. Especially um, in its pure non-digital form, like you, yeah. like we played, uh, we played Jaws of the Lion with like a little tableau on a tablet, ta which, yeah. which I'm not sure is legal anymore. But like at one point they had had a, like a free app that you could get to help yeah, with the no, monsters they, and stuff. Yeah, no, that's normal. Yeah, they do that with Gloomhaven mm -hmm. too. Um, that's just one one quick ex example. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know if I should put this in with it, but but Mage Knight is kind of another one that's just like a lot of stuff to get out not to mention that you usually always have to review the rules for a day <laughs> every time you pull that game out because it's another like just sprawling it's an eight hour game to play through um so that's just it's a lot to get out on the table uh that's another one where i'm like man i love mage knight god i don't want to get that out right now because it's just if <laughs> you know you see it on the on the shelf well, that's a good that's point, just, though. You got to study. Yeah. You got to study to play it. Mm. Like I've got a couple of games like that. It was like, well, I can't just pull it off yeah. the shelf and play it. It's it's not the kind of game that you're you're just playing uh, regularly because it's so intensive. And it's like that's that's this is another one of them. But there's been a lot of campaign games that I've just I've just stopped looking at. I'm like, yeah, that looks really cool. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember that, um, there was. Oh man, there's a there's a company that's that makes a lot of uh, really good miniatures, and they made um, Wild Ascent was one I actually I backed in and backed out of because uh, it's just another big huge pile of miniatures kind of thing in this this big campaign to roll through with it. Um, oh, was that was that the one with the te Temeru? Was that Wild Ascent? That was uh, the Tebru is it Tebru, Tebru or something? The the electronic yeah. table. Uh, Sword and Sorcery is one that was actually one of the first ones that they were putting on that with that, that uh, game really? system. I can't remember if they were doing that with, with Wild Ascent or not. But, yeah, it's just, you know, having, uh, just, it's just, you know, it's, I'm kind of getting kind of that point where it's just really nice to have a game contained in, like, you know, a decent sized box. Mm. Use the, use the you know, at least, at least Gloomhaven has their uh, standees, which I'm starting to become more attracted to just for the, size um i mean that's like the unequivocal like uh game that has the most value for it by far because it's just a huge amount of content and a pretty big box but i mean and it's fun it is fun yeah and you compare that to like other games of similar size and you won't get near as much content for that same you know space requirement but but you might not need it yeah. you might play four or five games <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get Jaws, up, get Jaws of the Lion. If you can beat Jaws of the Lion all the way through and you want more, then get Gloomhaven. <laughs> That's good, good advice. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what about Euros? Yeah, so that's what I was going to come down to at the end of this was the Euros um, with the, uh, well, specifically UA Rosenberg games uh, are, are a great example. Um, you know, uh, Agricola is probably the most well-known game that he's he's got. Uh, a lot of little like little building tiles and things that you gotta you gotta get out, set up. It's just a lot of these little stacks and things that you have to deal with. Um, you got uh, Cavernas right in the same boat. It's a very similar game with with that. 
uh, similar concept. Um, and then you got uh, uh, what you you said it earlier. Uh, Feast, Feast for Odin. Feast for Odin. Now, do they one. do they generally come with organizers or something, or is that always something you no. have to build? No, yeah, I don't know. My caverna is just a bunch of bags. <laughs> I th I don't remember if I, I ended up doing an insert, like printing out an insert for that one. But yeah, I know originally it was just a bunch of bags to have to deal with. You um, can mitigate a lot of stuff, making it like, making your own inserts and yeah. things like that. You've done a ton of that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I that's what my printer's for is inserts. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm switching. I'm going to get one of the FDM ones. He's going to have to. He keeps hearing us talk about it. He's got a couple of buddies now. They just keep hearing him about <laughs> FDM printers. I'm not buying that off Etsy anymore. Yeah, screw that. Uh, but that'll take that'll take a game that's hard to table and make it kind yeah. of like more reasonable. But yeah. boy. Well, you know, any of those like big Euros like Uwe Rosenberg's games are like there's, you know, just a ton of, of options. His games are like, that's like the theme around his games is like, here's a million options. Go make <laughs> something happen. And like, uh, but it's not just that there's so many options. There's usually tiles for all those options too. So you got like all these little stacks of things. You get all this little piece out, that piece out, put this piece here. So it is a lot. And uh, and those are kind of mentally heavy games too. So that's, that's, a, that's a little bit outside of the genre of what we're talking about in this video about the mental aspect for the games but i i think there's there's several dimensions of what makes something mm -hmm. terrible to table yeah. uh just getting it onto the table man if you if that part's hard then how you know then when you're done that's the other thing when you're done playing with it like i've i've put stuff out before i went oh my god how am i ever going to get all this back <laughs> <laughs> into the box you know, it's great playing with the other board game people because usually they're just like, how can I help? And they're sorting all your pieces out. And, yeah, that's and Eventually true. it's just like, okay, let me do the rest of it because i got to figure it out. There, there is something out. cathartic about putting everything back in its place and yeah. stuff like that too. Yeah. A place for everything and a thing for every place. Yeah. You know, on the other side of that, uh, the companies like Game Trays have changed in the, in the fact that you can that people will offer these game trays and stuff like this. Well, like, we've got Dwellings of Elderville out in front of us right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're sending this up to, I'm playing it for the first time. Owen's going to teach me this. And you can watch it on an organic cardboard, Owen's channel. <laughs> but uh, the, pulling this stuff out, I mean, these trays with uh, with all your cards and your chits and mm -hmm. your stuff, and you're just like... Okay, it's set out. Yeah, these these are uh, excellent. If you haven't seen Dwellings of Elderville talked about before, but you have little spot. individual. You want to be the blue player? Here's your pieces. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing is is great. And to put it back up with to uh, makes the game. This this was a great example of, uh, and one of the reasons why we put this out on the table before we started talking about this was this is a a really good example of a game that could be a pain in the butt to put out. But these game trays inserts, I believe, are just standard with the game too. So yeah, um, it, it, it's it all like I was sitting there talking and able to to set it up at the same time, and not get confused. Everything's it's pretty quick, easy to set up, and then uh, put away is not too bad either. Uh, but it's it's just great to be able to just pull trays out, set it, set something up that could otherwise um, it could be a little heavy to set up if all these cards were in bags and I had to have little spots to put all these these tokens in front of them and pull each one of them out of a bag put them up um that would that would have been a little that would definitely have, have doubled the time to set this up but uh it sets up really well quick. There, there's a uh, the vacuum form trays have like been become really creative mm -hmm. like they used to be kind of real generic like the what simon does is they provide a place to store your stuff mm -hmm. but it's doesn't it's not very useful in terms of like putting uh making your setup easier yeah and this is the opposite now now there aren't their miniatures are set in set in little trays kind of like other things mm -hmm. but 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 the whole uh you're this player here's all your stuff that that aspect is just super useful so even if your friends mm -hmm. come over and they're all wishy-washy and don't know what color they want to be you can still just hand them a stack of stuff yeah. and they pick the one they like look at all this pretty stuff here you go that's you. <laughs> All right. That is you for today. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think a lot of these these game companies, the they make inserts to uh, make sure that they get the game to you safely, and that's about the extent of it. They, right. They put enough spaces, dividers, and things so that things aren't banging around against each other. 
Um, some of these guys, I'm like, man, they, they look like they went through some trouble to make this insert. And then they have, there's, there's no instruction for how to put it back up. And then you're, you know, you're, you're looking at it and you're like, what the heck is this space even for? This doesn't make any, you know, and so you just kind of pack stuff in. You got stuff doubled over in the same space and areas. And, and then it's just kind of confusing when you get it back out and then to go back and put it back up again later. It's, it's like a puzzle bit, every time yeah. you do it. Try to, oh, I know that I got the box lid all the way down before. <laughs> why don't why want it go? Yeah, so sometimes I'm just like, why are you even printing this insert? Why don't you just like put cardboard in there if you want, you know, like sometimes they do those cardboard inserts. They're just little fold-ups. Sometimes I'm like, why didn't you just do that in bags if you're going to make an insert with this much trouble that sucks this bad? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I guess that's the whole thing about they probably got it sent out to China. They sent it back, and then they were like, ah, we can't do this again. We need to hurry up and make the game. So they just like, this is good enough. We can pack the game in here and ship it. Well, I love it when the inserts help uh too because mm -hmm. like there's some games like nemesis for instance like when i play nemesis i like to have my little card wrangler that holds all the little different card options in a little stand-up tray and stuff mm -hmm. these are all things that i've just kind of added on myself yeah. and, and stuff like that so it's kind of a pain i can't just take all those things uh with me when i go places yeah. and nothing about their insert helps me set the game out mm -hmm. you know so yeah like even uh well i just <clears throat> i just uh unboxed uh apiary actually today uh and put that out uh and uh there they had i don't know how great that insert is because i haven't got to play the game yet but one thing that was just a nice little add-on is one of the spots where things went to actually removed up out of the rest of the insert so it was a tray to use if there wasn't anything special about it it wasn't like it was just just a simple there was only one. I don't. I don't really know how that's going to work as far as right. like being really useful or not. Maybe it will be. Maybe it won't. But it was just a nice addition. It's like, oh, this was obviously here to be able to pull out and put on your table. So little things like that are are really really nice. It's starting to become an insert video as we go. <laughs> <laughs> I think inserts have a direct proportion to like how table yeah, is. sometimes how fun a game is too, just because yeah. it is, you know, it takes, it takes away the bad parts. It well, if you get to play it, it's a lot more fun than when you look yeah. at it on your shelf. Helps, it helps to uh, <laughs> mitigate some of the poison that goes on when you're setting up a game. It's kind of true. Po poisons <laughs> yeah. your fun. Uh, it's a little bit of an antidote, I guess is the word I'm trying to, to think of. Um, well, I think that's about yeah. that's all I got that's, to say on it. Yeah, that's a good good end of it. But. So, folks, well, we like talking about board games. We like hanging out, and uh, and we do reviews. We do all kinds of stuff. Uh, Owen's got organic cardboard, and you're right here on my channel. Be sure to subscribe because we'd love to see you again. Here's some more videos you can watch. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>